Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today I'm working on this Cub Cadet Time Saver I-1046. This is a zero turn mower. I picked this up near the end of last summer and the complaint on this mower was it didn't turn. What we have is this piece over here is broken off. I'm not sure what else is wrong with this as far as it turning. It was hard start. The owner said it didn't start. I was able to start it up and get it up onto the trailer. Although it was a little tricky, he had to turn this wheel by hand. Now, I didn't have time to work on this. And unfortunately, it sat out all year. So whatever problems it had when I picked it up, I'm sure there's a few others. Before I did anything, I checked the battery and it wasn't fully charged. I charged it yesterday up to 12 point, uh, I think five or six. And it started raining, I had to go inside. As you can see, I'm working outside. And today I checked the battery and it's 11 point something. So this battery may have a dead cell or may have to be conditioned or just need a new battery. But what I'm gonna do before I start it up, one, I'm gonna take this cowling off, make sure there aren't any mice nest under here, make sure the wires aren't chewed up. And then, I'm gonna hook up a separate gas tank. Oh, by the way, I'm doing these videos in parts. If you have any questions or comments on them, please post them down below. On some of the videos that I was trying to get a full view on, I was shaking the camera too much and I had a few complaints. And it's hard when you're by yourself to set up the camera, get some work done, check the camera, look, get it in a different position. And I have a lot of work to do, and unfortunately, I just don't have time to keep moving the camera around. So what I'm doing, and let me know whether you like this or not. This is getting a little long-winded here. I apologize for that. But let me know whether you like it or not. What I've done in the last couple of videos, I'm doing in this one also. I, I mentioned what I'm going to do. After it's done, I show you the results. If there's anything in particular, anything that's odd that stands out to me, I point it out. Then I go to the next step and I go along that way. If, if that's a format that you enjoy, let me know. And if it's something you don't enjoy, let me know that also. So I'm gonna get to it now. One other thing, this tire was flat. I just put air in it and we'll see if this holds up. I wanna get this started, move it out of this tall grass. Got a lot of ticks up in this area. Looks like we got wasps flying around over here too. So somewhere in here, there's a wasp nest. Oh. Let's see. This is something you want to watch out for when you're working on equipment at the beginning of the year. Check this out. There's one, two, three that I see. So there's got to be more. There he is in there. This guy up here, the other guy on the fender. Uh, I'm going to have to get something here to swat these guys with and uh, maybe put on a pair of sneakers. Anyway, let me get going before I get stung. Oh, we have wasps and yellow jackets. Check this out. We have a variety over here. Anyway, let me get going and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Good news is I'm not in the hospital for many wasps or bee stings. A couple of things I want to point it out. The air filter under here isn't that bad as far as mice, but you can see mice were in here. See that where it's chewed up? They love to get into the engine this way. The bolts on the side, four bolts. They have um, eight millimeters or five sixteenths. So get those out. In the front, you have two bolts that require a 10 millimeter wrench. Now, on this engine, they have the gas lines connected to the pump, but the pump's connected to the cowling, so you have to remove the gas lines, which I was going to do anyway. I'm going to point out, you don't need one of these, but if you're working on engines often, you should get one. When you're taking these hoses off, generally you could just squeeze the clip with a pair of pliers, slide it down, and twist never just pull it straight out always twist and take them out get a screwdriver in there and pry it down but with one of these makes it a lot easier to grab a hold of that hose twist it around and pull down gently all right now let's see what's underneath just pull the bolts are out let's see what surprise we have here all right this is what i expected I have other videos that show mice nest inside the engine and for some reason they always go around the coil if you're not getting any spark on your engine remove the cowling regardless what engine it is check underneath 
and you'll find these wires chewed. Why they go for these wires? I read an article once where the wires were coated with peanut oil for whatever reason. Some car manufacturers do the same. Look at the size of that nest. All right. Another thing, if your engine does start and you have a nest like this, I pointed it out in other videos, this engine is air-cooled, although it has oil to keep the uh, internals lubricated. If it's not getting enough air going through the fins to cool this engine off, you will blow this and any other engine. I picked up a few mowers that had holes in the side of the engine the size of a golf ball where the connecting rod broke and shot right through the side. So I'm going to remove this now. Uh, you don't want to breed any of this in. You don't want to touch it. My son the uh, cleanest of uh, pets. So once I clean this up, I'll check the wire. If the wire looks good, we'll clean it up a little bit in here. I'm going to connect another gas tank onto this. Whatever fuel is in here, not in here, I don't want to take any chances. I have a video up above where I had to change a fuel pump because of the bad gas that was coming through, the debris that was in it, ruined the gas pump. Plus, a carburetor clean. Anyway, let me clean this up. I'll come back and show you if the wires are chewed up. If they're not, I'm just going to continue with the process. Well, it's worse than I thought it would be. I never saw one quite this bad. Looks like a uh, little Peppino came and gave me a visit. I don't know, Peppino might have been in the time way before most of you have been around. But for those of you who remember, Peppino Sula Jail, where is he? Ah, there he is. Looks like he came, not only did he make a home, but he had a feast. He completely chewed this wire. Look at the gap between here and here. It's about a little over an inch. Chewed it right up. Now let's see, this wire goes in here. And usually you have a little slack. Chewed that wire up. Chewed the um, kill wire for this cylinder. This is a twin cylinder. You have a kill wire on that side and one on this side. Shut off wire. Uh, what else? This uh, electrical wire coming from the engine. He killed that. Now, I have some wires that I could splice into here. Cut this bed out. There's enough over here where I could splice into this. I don't have any to shrink tube left. I have to go pick some up. So this video is going to come to a halt. As far as this coil, I might be able to get another spark plug wire. And I might be able to tap into this. I tried it once before and it worked. Where I got a screw. A small screw. And I screwed it into one end. I ground off the head. Made a point on one side. Pushed it into this piece over here. And the screw part, I just screwed the other wire into it. And it worked. If nothing else, it could get me running until the new coil comes in. I have to pick up a new coil for this. I don't know what it is on this engine. Generally, they run anywhere from $20 to $50 is usually top. I did try taking the screw out, and it's rusted in here. You see this? Don't force it, because if you strip this, you'll be able to get it with a pair of vice grips, maybe. But if you break it off in there, you're going to have a job. So what I'm going to do is soak this down with my 50-50 mix of acetone and transmission fluid. Going to let this soak. While this is soaking, I'll be playing with these wires. I'll be looking for some wire that I can splice into here. And also, when it's like this, before you go to get this out, when you have your socket on it, tap it with a hammer a little. Don't go banging it like crazy. Just give it a little tap to help break this rust off. Well, this is going to be it for today. Once this is done and I have this all together, then I'll get back to starting this engine up. We saw that this coil not only had the wire chewed off, but almost two inches of it was missing. So what I'm going to attempt to do while I'm waiting for a new coil to come in is to clean this coil up. I'm going to use this ignition wire from the blazer that was changed and connect it to this coil. The way I'm going to go about that is using this screw. Once I have it together, I'll use the shrink tube over it and tape it and see if we get that to work until the new coil comes in. These coils I've seen online anywhere from uh, $20 to $100 and change, depending if they're OEM, made in China. I read some of the reviews on the made in China. Some said they worked, some said they were garbage. I don't know which way I'm going to go on that yet, but I'm going to give this a shot just to get that tractor running and take care of the other issues that I 
keeping it from being useful. So let's put this together. What I'm going to do first is put the screw into the long wire so it has a little bit of a start. Then I'm going to screw it into the wire that's connected to the coil. Once it's connected to the coil, I'm going to cut this part of the screw off, taper it a little bit, and screw this wire into it. So let me get that going, and we'll see the results when I come back. Um, I put the screw in to the coil side of the wire. I cut the head of the screw off. I put a little bit of a point on it. Also, while I had the grinder going, I cleaned off some of the finish of the screw. I cleaned off the rust on the contact points where this will go on to the engine. This is a ground, and I cleaned up the face of this. So now I have the ignition wire. Put on a piece of heat shrink. I'm going to screw this in. And this should work. We'll see in a few minutes whether it does or doesn't. I'm going to finish screwing this in, slide this heat shrink over it, maybe put some tape around it also, reconnect it to the engine, and see if it starts up. Okay, here's where I'm at. This is the spark plug wire that came off the Chevy Blazer. Here's the coil that was destroyed. I used that screw to connect the wire to the coil. I wrapped it up with some tape and put this heat shrink over the top of it. We'll see if it works. Next, remember these wires were chewed up. This wire here, I taped because at the time I didn't have any heat shrink. I had to go out, so I picked some up on the way out. Look at the difference when you heat shrink it or when you just tape it. Now, to, put, to gap the coil, if you never did this before, I usually use a business card for the space in here. Been doing it for years. Some business cards were a little thicker than others, but I never had a problem with it. One of my subscribers recommended that the plastic from a milk carton is the right thickness for in there. Now, I don't know about that. This looks pretty thin compared to a business card, but I'm going to try it. Not that I have a lack of business cards, but they always crumble up when they're in your toolbox. This piece of plastic I can keep in the box, and there's not too much that's going to damage it. But again, it looks a little thin. Maybe he had a thicker milk carton, just like business cards. Some are thicker than others. But we're going to give it a shot and see if it works. Now let me set up this camera so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, one other note. The magnet that goes around is covered with rust. I was told by a couple of people it doesn't make a difference, but over the years, whenever I have these apart, I do clean them up. I hit it with a brass brush, knock the major rust off, and then I use a little sandpaper to finish it off. I figure while I'm in there, it can't hurt. Now, you keep these two screws loose so this coil can slide back and forth. You turn the flywheel, until the magnet gets up to the coil. Once it does, you can see that the magnet's pulling the coil right to it. And you have the spacer in between. Then you tighten the two screws. It's that simple. Like I said, that gap looks a little too small but it's not a problem to readjust it. And then you just spin it out and pull your spacer out. Now, and you can see that space in there. It's not much. Well, it goes this way. If you're having trouble pulling your, uh, spinning your flywheel around, you can always pull the spark plugs out for this. It won't make a difference. All right, we have the gap. So next, I have to get this kill switch back on, get the cowling on top. I'm going to use that portable gas tank I have. I'm going to use the jumper on that battery 
and see if we could get this to start. If I had to guess, we're probably gonna have some problems with the carburetor, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, I have it all together. I have the wires connected underneath. I disconnected the line from the fuel tank. I have this portable fuel tank with fresh fuel in it to feed the pump. I checked the battery and it was reading only 12.1 volts, so I have the jumper on it. We're gonna see if this starts now. I'm not sure what that problem is. I'm gonna have to remove all this and see what's happening. Once I find out, I'll be back. To get the flywheel off, I loosened the bolt with an impact wrench, backed it out a little bit, put a pry bar underneath, looked for a spot that was solid. As I was prying down, I gave it a quick whack, and then I had to wiggle this off. Now. We have the key, it's here. From the top, you couldn't see the key. I thought maybe the key was shared, but what happened, this ring came off the flywheel. So when you hit the starter motor, this ring would spin, but not the flywheel. And here's the crack. I have a crack right over here. It wasn't making that noise that you heard earlier. Sat here. Nobody touched it for over a year. What made it crack? I have no idea. I'll be cleaning all this out in here. I'll be looking for another flywheel. I don't know if this could be welded or not. I have to look that up. Whether this could be welded back together and cleaned up, don't know. But this is a new one for me. Clean this off over here off the magnets. Oh. Looks like we're missing a magnet too, right here. I don't see any, that's probably what's cracked this flywheel over here. This magnet came out. Okay, so we're missing a magnet. All right, here it is. Okay, so the magnet wasn't what cracked it because it just stayed in place. You can see where it scratched it up. You can see where it scratched this up somewhat, I believe. I'm going to clean it out in here. Not much I can do right now. I'm going to research this over here, see if I can find another flywheel. I don't have another Kohler engine on hand, otherwise I would just swap them out. And if any of you have any idea on what can make this ring snap like this to separate from the flywheel, Post it in the comment down below. I'd be interested in finding out why, and I'm, I'm sure other DIYers would be interested in that as well. Oh, and if this could be welded, let me know. I don't see why, why it wouldn't be able to be welded, because it's all, the only pressure that's on here is when it initially starts. So with that, we'll see. But this is something. This is what happens when an engine sits. You gotta stay on top of them. As you can see, this turned out to be a longer process than I thought it would be. So I'm gonna break this video up into two parts. This would be part one, 
on how to get the engine started. Part two, I'll be addressing this ring gear where you could purchase it and whether I'm going to repair it or not, we'll see. And the installation of the ring gear, plus we have to reattach this magnet onto the flywheel itself. So in part two, we'll have the installation of the magnet, the ring gear, and then we'll see if this is going to start. That's it for today. If you found this video useful or entertaining, let me know by giving it a like, posting your comments or your questions down below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Hit that Joe Z button at the end of the video. And until next time, be safe.